We need the river for access. What about the other area downstream? We can't afford them both, Simeon. Well, we've got to. If anyone else starts prospecting, we'll have lost all that we've done over the last six months. There. That's my share for the claim. I'm off at first light. I should make Pretoria in four days. We'll be back in ten, eh? In six months, we'll be rich. Good night, Herod. Good night. van die paarden en vorm terug naar die kraal. Who the hell are you? Stella de Zeichter. And you? Lee. Simeon Lee. How long have I been here? This is your third day. You'd have died in half a day if we hadn't have found you. Thanks. I was uh, mauled by a lion. Yeah, I know. I took the bullet out. All right. My partner attacked me. That's what diamonds do to people, eh? Don't worry, they're safe. And your map, it's a bit bloodstained, though. Do you... Uh, live out here all by yourself? My father got tired of trying to marry me off. Simeon? Simeon! Simeon! Glorious for the home, for the 
Happy Christmas. And to you, sir. Thank you very much. Well, that's the last decent meal I'll get till the new year, I expect. You are not looking forward to your Christmas, Chief Inspector? We're going to Mrs. Jack's family in Wales. Oh, if yes. they start singing again... <laughs> I shall think of you, Chief Inspector, as I sit down to my simple repast. For Poirot, it will be a quiet Christmas. With my radio, perhaps, a book, and a box of exquisite Belgian chocolates. Well, listen, Poirot. Think of me on Christmas morning. When you open this. Oh, thank you very much, Chief Inspector. Merry Christmas, Warren. Merry Christmas to you. Oh, yes, of course. There we are, my dear. And thank a very you, happy Christmas to you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Dicker? Yes. Mr. Dicker, my radiator, it has gone cold, and there is a... Broken, sir. But then the boiler, it must be repaired. It will be after Christmas, sir. After Christmas? That is most unsatisfactory. Unfortunately, uh, I can't do anything about it. I don't... I cannot go home to the plumber, sir, until the last of the holidays. I'm sorry about it, but there's nothing... Au revoir, Mr. Dicker. Yes. Hercule Poirot? Yes, it is I, Hercule Poirot, who speaks. I need a detective to come and stay here in my house for Christmas. Oh, now, right. don't say no just like that. Hear me out. Superintendent Sugden of the Shropshire Police recommended you. I do not know. I don't care if you don't know him. He knows you. My life is in danger. Have you received any threats, Monsieur? Uh, Lee, uh, Simeon Lee. Oh, well, you'd have to be here to understand. Tell to me, if you please, Monsieur Lee, does your house have the central heating? What? Yes, of course. Very well. Poirot will be there tomorrow. Give to me, if you please, your address. I saw three ships come sailing in Help on Christmas Day, day. on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come Help sailing in on Christmas Day. Help the needy at Christmas. Oh. 
you ready to order, sir? Uh, yes, thank you very much. But please, don't tell me, what is this brown wind sauce soup? Well, sir, it's soup from Windsor. I see. I would then I would have this brown wind sauce soup. I'm a side of a Okay, if I share your table. Of course. <sighs> well, I'll be glad to get out of London, I don't mind telling you. Oh, terrible place. But you are English, no? Been abroad for years. What about you? I'm Spanish. Do you see any of this uh, civil war business over in Spain? I saw a bomb drop and it blew up a car. That didn't upset you? Oh, one is alive for a time in this world, yes, and then one is dead. And one's friends are sad and one's enemies rejoice. I mean, don't you believe in forgiving your enemies? Senorita? No. I do not. If I had an enemy, I would cut his throat like this. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be your enemy, Senorita. But it does not look very uh, delicious. Well, sir, it is brown Windsor soup. What um, brings you to England? I'm going to stay with my English relations. They are very rich, I think. They live in a big house called Gorston Hall. Good God. What is it? You must be Jennifer's girl. My mother's name was Jennifer. I'm Harry Lee. Jennifer was my sister. Does the family know you're coming? Oh, yes. It's more than they do with me. He's playing God, as he always does. It's the role he enjoys most. Well, I think it's extremely boring. Well, boring or not, it's our duty to be here, Magdalena. Moreover, it enables us to save considerably. But we shouldn't have to scrimp and save like this. Well, can't you make your father give you some more money? Well, he upped my allowance last year. And what happens when he dies? The bulk of his money comes to Alfred and myself. Isn't there another brother? No, no, no. Harry left years ago. We don't talk about him, incidentally. A very disreputable character. Well, your father's not all that reputable, George. What on earth do you mean by that? Well, when he gets me alone, he makes me feel quite uncomfortable. The things he says. Yes, yes, well, one has to make allowances. It isn't only the things he says. At father's age, with his health being so bad... Given to him, Alfred. He's a very old man, Lydia. Well, you'll get older and more tyrannical. Why must we have George and Magdalena for Christmas? Well, Father hasn't seen George for a long time. He's very good to us, you know, Lydia. Oh, Alfred. Magdalena's going to be frightfully bored anyway. Well, why George has to go and marry a girl 20 years younger than himself, I shall never know. He always was a fool. Well, I suppose she's been quite a help to him in his constituency. All right, what is it, Aubrey? Beg pardon, sir. Is it convenient if I take the car? Mr. Lee has asked me to go to the station and meet some more guests. Some more guests? Wait a minute! We have just seen Horbury, and he 
he says ah, it wrong. Ah, Lydia, my dear. What a nice colour you've got. He says there are to be more guests for Christmas. Just straighten my legs for me, would you, my dear? It's a terrible thing to get old, Lydia. Who are these people that are coming? Well, first of all, there's my old friend Hercule Poirot. Who's he? A friend. And then there's Pilar. Pilar? Pilar Estravados, Jennifer's girl, my granddaughter. But you didn't tell me. It's going to be a grand Christmas. All my children round me. <sighs> there now, Alfred, there's your clue. Guess who the other visitor is. But you haven't got any more. Your brother, Harry, of course. <laughs> What do you think of the spats and the patent leather shoes? Eh? <laughs> Just the thing for a weekend in the country. <laughs> and those mustachios must have enough wax in them to keep Madame Two Swords going for a fortnight. <laughs> Simeon Lee sent me to meet you. Mr. Harry Lee. Draw. I'll put your bags in the booth. Mr. Poirot. You were a friend of the old bastard Simeon. I am a friend of Mr. Lee, yes. There's no good you calling him Mr. Lee, chap. There'll be more Mr. Lees than you can shake a stick out of Gorston, this Xmas. And I'm one of them. Harry Lee's the name. Hercule Poirot. Pardon? Poirot. Hercule Poirot. French, eh? No. I'm a long-lost uncle. Tell him your name, Pilar. Pilar Estrabados. You two should get on, being foreign. Father, protesting in the strongest possible terms. No. Whatever good you think notes are going to do. <laughs> Bless my soul if it ain't Tresillian. How are you, Tresillian? Staring. Still here, eh? Still the same ugly old dump. You don't look very tough. Hercule Poirot is a detective, not a bodyguard, monsieur. Oh, is he? Got a brain, has he? <laughs> oh, good thing somebody has. All my sons are complete nincompoops. I've probably got better sons scattered all over the world. Born on the wrong side of the blanket. My family hate me, you know. It is not hard to see why, Monsieur Lee. <laughs> They're frightened of me. It is often the way with men who are old and rich. Well, anyway, I'm going to make an announcement this evening, and then they'll have good cause to hate me. What do you want? You wanted to see Miss Estrevados, sir. She's outside. All right. Uh, one more minute. What is it that you wish me to do here, Monsieur Lee? Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Bien, what am I looking for? What am I listening for? You'll know when it happens.
Tresillian is taking your bags to your room, sir. Thank you. I've been a very wicked man, Pilar. What do you think of that? The nuns say all men are wicked. Nuns? <laughs> I don't regret it. I've enjoyed every moment of it. I've cheated and I've stolen and I've lied. And the women. Are you shocked, Pilar? Why should I be shocked? Men always desire women. That is why wives are unhappy. Go to church and pray. You are the devil's brat. Well, you like me to sit here with you, Grandfather? Yes, I do. It's a long time since I was close to anything as young and beautiful as you are. It warms my old bones. Ah, but you don't fool me. Don't think I don't know why you sit here listening to me droning on. Money. All right. I'll show you something. yesterday from the company museum in Pretoria. These are the first diamonds I ever took from my first mine. But they are little pebbles, that is all. They are uncut. That's how diamonds are when they're found. Well, why do you not have them cut? Because I like them like this. It all comes back to me. The sunshine, and the oxen, and the smell of the veld, and the quiet of the evenings. <laughs> it is unfortunate. These so-called Republicans have forced him to take the action he has taken. But take it from me, Generalissimo Franco has right on his side. Well, yes, uh, it is always reassuring to hear the opinion of an expert on these matters. I see what you're trying Let's open anybody's glass up. You're very tanned. Have you spent time in South Africa too, like your father? No, only a year or two. I've been in Argentina mostly, well, apart from my time in Macau. I'm afraid I've been absolutely nowhere. Uh, could I have a word, Lydia? I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me. How about you? I've remembered who this Hercule Poirot is. He's a detective. The police? Oh, surely not. He's one of those private detectives. But why should your father want to... Excuse me, sir. What is it, Horbury? Mr Lee's ready to see you all now. Come in! Hello, is, is that you, Charlton? Oh, yes, I'm sorry to trouble you at home, but it is rather urgent. I, I want you to make a new will for me, yes. Uh, sit down, I won't be long. Yes, well, you see, it's some time since the other will was made and things have changed. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to spoil your Christmas. Come over on Boxing Day. Oh, the next day, yes, yes. I shan't be dying just yet. <laughs> Goodbye. You're all looking very glum. What's the matter? Harry, uh, I don't know you anywhere. Even after all these years, your taste in clothes hasn't improved, I see. Good to see you, Dad. You're looking well. Fortunately, I did not ask you all up here for the pleasure of seeing your smiling faces, but because I want to say that we have to reorganize things a bit now that we have two more people living in the house. What do you mean? Pilar will make her home with us here, naturally, and Harry is home for good. Harry's coming to live here? 
Well, what's wrong with that old boy? Harry is my son too, you know, George. Of course, it is going to mean cutting back a little in other areas. Your allowance, for instance, George will have to go. Well, you can't do that, Father. You don't understand how heavy my expenses are already. Oh? Well, let your wife do her bit, then. She could make her own clothes. Even my wife could make her own clothes. And she was one of the most stupid women it's been my sorrow to meet. You've no right to talk about our mother like that. Right! Right! You've no rights, any of you. You're just a set of nervy, babby weaklings. Has any of you produced one grandson for me? No! Hold hard, Dad. Oh, I'm just sick to death of the lot of you. Get out! Get out, all of you! Get out! Get out! What's got into him? Go to hell! I blame you, Alfred. You've had charge of him here. What are you talking about? I think there's a case for getting a doctor in right away. A doctor? <laughs> there's nothing wrong with him. He's clearly not of sound mind. Two doctors, isn't it? Uh, ladies, shall we? <clears throat> shall I announce you, Superintendent? That's all right, Tresillian. Mr. Lee's expecting me. Have some coffee. The gentleman will be through with it. Over here. It's wonderful that you could come, Pilar. It's wonderful for me too to meet my uncles and aunts and this grand house. After seven years, yeah, I've got these blokes chasing me for cash. I was having a word at cocktail party with Buffy, and, and um, you know he has the, the ear of the PM, right? It, who was it? Mr. Sugden, Superintendent of Police. Watch what you're doing. I'm sorry, Mr. Tresillian. You've got no right to go touching things. What did he want, this police superintendent? He's collecting for the police orphanage. Oh. And did he get anything? I'm sure he did. We'll be having more snow tonight, I shouldn't wonder. We'll be cut off again if we're not careful. Good night, ladies. Trying to get the pictures. I expect so.
the door down. Don't be a fool, it's made of solid oak. Quick, battering ram. What's One, going on? One, two, three. Let's what try again, harder. What was that terrible? One, noise? two, three. I've forgotten my book. I didn't know whether you were open it, sir. What's going on? Something's happened upstairs, sir. Well, superintendent, I was just going to telephone the police. I would have used old Mr. Lee's phone, but they told me not to touch anything. Oh, what? Dear. It's old Mr. Lee, sir. Mr. Simeon. He's been killed. Murdered. My God, what a shambles. But nothing must be touched. All right. I want this room cleared. Who are you? Police. Superintendent Sutton. You got here very quickly. Would everybody please wait downstairs? Excuse me, miss. Nothing must be touched or disturbed. She knows that. You picked up something from the floor just now. I did. It's in your hand now. Please give it to me. Ah, you must be Mr. Poirot. Superintendent. Lucky we had a detective here on the spot. Ah, perhaps. Stay in here, would you? Look. Don't touch it. It is where he kept his diamonds. They have gone. Sagan was going to call in Scotland Yard in any case, so I suggested that as you were just across the border. Have been the work of a lunatic. That's your theory, is it? Isn't there some mental home in the vicinity? A homicidal maniac? How do you suppose this homicidal maniac gained admittance to the house, Mr. Lee? The only door that wasn't locked was the kitchen door, and the kitchen staff didn't see any homicidal maniacs. Well, uh... Pardon. No. Come in, Mr. Poirot. I have the Chief Inspector Jap with me, Superintendent. Jap? Why? From... Scotland Yard. This is a pleasure indeed, Chief Inspector. Thank you, sir. 
I expect you're used to this kind of thing, Chief Inspector, but murders are few and far between in this part of the country. I imagine so, sir. Well, uh, I was just about to ask Mr. George Lee here the crucial question. Oh, yes? Which is, of course, Mr. Lee, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in here. On the telephone. Calling my agent in Westringham, as a matter of fact. So you were actually in this room when you heard the noises from upstairs? The crashing about and screaming. Yes. Mr. Poirot tells me these diamonds have gone from the safe, sir. Yes. I'm getting a few more men in from Shrewsbury to do a thorough search of the house and grounds. But the theft of the diamonds may not be as indicative as it seems. Forgive me, madam. I don't understand, Superintendent. Mr. Lee telephoned me yesterday afternoon. He wanted me to come over and see him at 8.15. Made a special point of the time. What's more, he told me to tell the butler that I was collecting for some police charity. Ah. Well, Mr. Lee is an important person in these parts, so I did as he said. He told me that several thousand pounds worth of uncut diamonds had been stolen from his safe. He thought. He thought? He said they definitely were missing, but that only two people could have done it. And one of them might have done it as a joke. I have yet to meet anybody in this household, Superintendent, that has even the most rudimentary sense of humour. He didn't happen to name these people, did he, sir? No, he didn't, Chief Inspector. But it's odd. He wanted me to go away and come back again in about an hour. Said he'd have a clearer idea then about if he'd been robbed or if it was a joke. I can tell you, by this time I was getting pretty fed up with Mr Lee. But of the two people that he suspected, is it possible that one could be a servant and the other a member of his family? And if it was family, he didn't want to drop them in it. Well, yes. Perhaps my visit was just meant to put the frighteners on them. So you left? Yes, I did. It wasn't worth my while going all the way home, so I went and sat in the car. I was just on my way back. I was to use leaving the orphanage subscription book behind as an excuse, when all this hell broke loose. What's been going on in it? Simeon Lee was a man who was shrunken, old and frail, Nesper. And yet all this, it signifies, do you not think so, Chief Inspector? Looks more like a five-star riot than a simple throat cutting. Mm. This door was locked, you say? Yes. Ma'am? There are no prints on it, apart from the old man's. You observe the little scratches at the end of the barrel, Chief Inspector. That's been turned from the outside, using long-nosed pliers. But why, mon ami? So that we would think that Simeon Lee locked the door himself and that it was suicide? <laughs> the suicide must strength, Nespa, who hurls around the room or the furniture and then screams before he commits the act? Suppose Mr. Lee put up more resistance than the murderer expected hmm. and made such a racket that he had to get out quick before he had time to put the room to rights. He couldn't have gone out through the window. All bolted shut. This one isn't. But it's locked in that position for ventilation. But is it not a possibility that Simeon Lee did in fact commit a suicide? But wanted it to look like murder. Why would he do that? Because Simeon Lee was a man most vengeful, Chief Inspector, and had not a great love for his family. Blimey. Superintendent, what was it that Mademoiselle Estravados picked up from the floor in the room of Monsieur Simeon Lee? Oh, last night. Wait. Here. Oh. In detective stories, it's the sort of thing that solves the whole mystery. What do you think? A little wooden peg. And a little rubber ring. Keep them if you like. If they've got anything to do with the murder, I'll retire from the police force. No, 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 no. I would not deprive you of them, mon ami. <laughs> Tell me, what was it that made you recommend me to Monsieur Simeon Lee? I didn't. Ah. What time was it you went out last night? Just after eight o'clock. I went to the cinema in Oswestry. Street. It's only ten minutes in the bus. Anybody see you there? I was with a young lady. Oh, yes. What's her name? Doris Buckle, sir. She works in the United Dairies in Markham Road. 
I didn't have anything to do with this, sir. Well, I... What can you tell us about the diamonds Mr. Lee kept in his safe? Nothing, sir. They arrived the day before yesterday. Mr. Lee said they came from his old company museum in Africa. It's not very pleasant when a murder happens in a house. Nobody said it was. Thank you. I'm just looking. A Christmas presents, is it? <laughs> For the wife? Uh, no, no, no. No, if you please, monsieur, I should like to buy the present for a good friend. With a sense of humour, I dare say. Well. <laughs> Bulb-operated hairy spider? My three-in-one package of itching powder, ink blot, and stink bombs. Uh, no, 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 no. You see, my friend, he is a policeman. Oh. He uh, won't be wanting the Sherlock Holmes detective set then. I do not imagine so. No. Cigars. Exploding. Jamaican. Ah. Boom. Bonjour, Madame Lee. Bonjour, Monsieur. Good morning, Mr. Poirot. Pardon, Madame, but I do not understand that which you do. Oh, it's just a hobby of mine. Miniature gardens. Um, this one's a desert oasis, and this will be a, an Italian vineyard when it's finished. And uh, this is a Japanese garden. Do you see all the stones? <laughs> C'est charmant. Mr. Poirot, why did my father-in-law ask you to Galston? To tell you the truth, madame, I am not sure. He told me that his life was in danger. But from whom? He did not specify. There is somebody I don't trust. Aubrey's only been with us a year and... Tell me, madame, at the time of the murder, your husband, he was in the dining room with Monsieur Harry? Where were you? I was in the drawing room having coffee. So you were alone? Uh, no, no, the Spanish girl was there. No, no, she wasn't. Uh, she went out a couple of minutes before. First Magdalena went, and then Pilar went. So you were quite alone? Yes, I suppose I was. And tell me, who was the first to arrive at the door of your father and you? I was. And you saw there no other person? No other person who came out of the room? Of course 